Amen. All right. This afternoon, we'll be going over the parallels of Millerite history, and then, and we'll go through the first the first angel. So, what I have here is just the first angel from when it arrives until when it's empowered. So, that's the seventeen and eight. This is when the first angel messages the first angel message arrive. And then August 11, 1840, that's when the first angel's message is empowered. And I'm going to read a quote from Sister White from 1MR 57, paragraph 2. And it says, the gospel message for this time is comprised in the third angel's message. So in this first sentence, before, before it is even over, she states that the whole gospel message is in the third angel's message. Continuing on, it says, which embraces the messages of the first angel and second angel so within the third angel's message you will see the first and the second angel's message within the third continuing on it says and which is to be and which is to be proclaimed everywhere for it is present truth the message is to go forth with great distinctness and power it is not to be clouded by human theories and sophistries so with this study, I'm going to go through the first, the, the fir first angel's message in the Millerite line and show how it repeats in, in, in the time of the priest under their third, third message, under their third step, and show how the symbols transfer over also to our time. Now I'm going to read the next paragraph. and <clears throat> Excuse me. It is 1 MR 57, paragraph 3. 1 MR 57, paragraph 3. A great work is to be done in setting before, before men the saving truths of the gospel. To present these truths is the work of the third angel's message. She says again, the whole of the gospel is embraced in the third angel's message. And in all our work, the truth is to be presented as it is in Jesus. Let nothing lessen the force of the truth for this time. The third angel's message must do its work of separating from the churches of people who will take their stand on the platform of eternal truth. Our message is a life and death message. And we must let it appear as it is. The great power of God. We are to, we are to present it in all its telling force. Then the Lord will make it effectual. <clears throat> so, Sister so White states again that the whole gospel message is comprised in the third message. It's the first and second within the third. She also states in this paragraph that it must do a, a work of separating. And when are the wise, wise and foolish being separated? They're being separated under the third step. Also, she states, she says in the second to last Second to last sentence, she says, our message is a life and death message. So what that is telling me is that under the third message, there will be a separation either for life or for death. And also, we already know that in the Mara, Mara vision, where God's chosen will see God face to face and they fall as one dead. But God brings them back to life. So now... So now we're going to look at 1798 and uh, how it relates to our time. So now we're going to Daniel 1140. Daniel 1140. This is Daniel 1140a. And the verse says, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. So, at the time of the end, 1798, which parallels in our time under the third message, midnight, you will see the king of the south pushing. And this is the king of the south. This, is in, this work will be internal within the United States and is the king of the south pushing towards the king of the north. Both king of the south, king of the north within the, within the United States. And this will be steps towards the civil war within the United States. I'm just <clears throat> continue on it 
continuing on, we're going to read from Daniel 12, verse 9. Daniel 12, verse 9. And it says, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed, closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So, at the time of the end, we know that there will be an increase of knowledge. And at midnight in our time, you will see an increase of knowledge on the book of Daniel. So more light upon Daniel will be placed, will, will be given at midnight to the wise priests, just as light upon Daniel was given in 1798. And I'll be reading from Great Controversy, page 356, paragraph 2. Great Controversy, page 356, paragraph 2. It says, But at the time of the end, says the prophet, many shall run to and fro. I'm going to point out the many to and fro, because the many running to and fro, there's two classes running, <clears throat> excuse me, running to and fro. The wise and the foolish will run to and fro at the time of the end. At midnight it says, but, but at the time of the end, says the prophet, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. So like, like we stated from before, we increase some knowledge on the book of Daniel at midnight. Continuing on, it says the man of sin, which also styled the mystery, the mystery of, of iniquity, the son of perdition and that wicked represents the papacy, which as foretold in prophecy was to maintain this was to maintain maintain its supremacy for 1260 years. This period ended in 1798. Continuing on, it says, But since 1798, the book of Daniel has been unsealed. Knowledge of the prophecies has increased, and many have proclaimed the solemn message of the judgment near. So Sister White is going over and over again, showing that at the time of the end, there will be light upon the book of Daniel, increased knowledge, on the book of Daniel. So, we see here that many shall run to and fro. We know that the wise shall run to and fro, because knowledge shall be increased, and they will receive light upon the prophecy. So they will run to and fro within the Bible to see what else the Bible has, has to say. So now, we're going to see how the foolish run to and fro as well. The wise run to and fro because they have light on the book of Daniel. The foolish, and we'll see. <laughs> Excuse me. We go to Amos 8.12 and it says, Amos 8.12, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. This is the foolish virgins going to the wise virgins, asking them for oil. They're asking them for light. They cannot get that light because they did not use the time that they had to prepare wisely. So they will run from north even to east. The foolish will receive no light and they will go looking for light and where they will not find it. So now, now moving onward to 1833, which took place under the first angel's message within Millerite history. So now, when the wise person, the wise virgins, excuse me, receive light upon the book of Daniel at midnight, then, then at the cross, at point B, this is when they will go out and preach, just as Miller preached after he received light upon Daniel. So now we're going to read from Great Controversy, page 333, paragraph 1. Great Controversy, page 333, paragraph 1. And it says, In 1833, Two years before Miller began to present in public, that two years before, oh, 
excuse me, in 18 in 1833, two years after Miller began began to present in public the evidences of Christ's soon coming, the last the, the last of the signs appeared, which which were promised by, by the Savior as tokens of his second advent, said Jesus, the stars shall fall from heaven, Matthew 24, 29. And John in the re Revelation declared, as he, as he beheld in vision the scenes that should herald the day of God, the stars of heaven fell, the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, Revelation 6, 13. So this is where Miller begins to speak. Miller speaks publicly here. This is when the message goes abroad. This is when the wise virgins take what they take what God has given them upon the book of Daniel, the light of Daniel that, that has been opened up to them and they present it publicly at the cross, which parallels 1833 with Miller. Um, and also in this quote from Great, Great Controversy, page 333, paragraph one, there was a sign here as well. And that sign was the falling of the stars. So now, so now we're going to see, we know that in that, in that time period, it was the meteor shower, but now we, but now we're going to look at it in a spiritual sense as well, because stars have, have a spiritual symbolic meaning. So now, we're going to read from Prophetic Faith of Our Fathers, Volume 4, page 587, paragraph 2. PFF 4, 587, paragraph 2. It says, Josiah Litch discuss the fifth and sixth trumpets of Revelation 9. A typical emphasis at the time, particularly for him. The fallen star was Muhammad, and the symbolic locust, the Muslim hordes of horsemen. So, we have the stars falling here. And we know that. And. The pioneer here just stated that, stated that Muhammad is the fallen star. He, he was the fallen star. And we know that Muhammad symbolizes Islam. Muhammad here symbolizes Islam. So, the light upon Daniel, which the wise priests receive from the Lord, will go out and give the message about Islam that will trouble the nations because God, um, God warns a nation before he can judge the nation. So the message about Islam towards the United States is a warning before the judgment on at midnight cry. Also, <clears throat> we'll go back to GC 333, paragraph 1, where Sister White um, quotes Revelation 6.13. Now we're going to read Revelation 6.13, and it states, And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And now when you, when you read this, and you run it through, God's word, you see that it is connected to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And we already stated who the star was. 
And the star is, is a symbol of Muhammad, which is showing Islam. Also, going back to the quote of prophetic faith of our fathers, it says that Josiah Lich discussed the fifth and sixth trumpets of Revelation 9. The fifth and the sixth trumpets is the first and second woe, which is pointing to Islam. So we already know, if he was in the triple application of prophecy, the first and second shows the third. So the message here is bringing about, is showing the third woe upon Upon, upon the United States. I'm not saying that the third wall starts at midnight, but the third wall continues from 9-11 onward. So, you will see, yet again, it will be is a message of Islam, a warning towards the United States that if they're, what they're about to do when they, ca um, when they put in place the Sunday law, they'll be judged and Islam will attack them at the midnight cry. And we know that <clears throat> the sixth trump, the, the second woe, excuse me, ended on August 11, 1840, when the when the message was empowered in Millerite history. So now, we'll, so now we'll read Revelation 9, 14, and 15, which speaks of the sixth angel, the second woe, and it says. Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. It says, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for, this, for to slay the third part of men. So on August 11th, 1840, when... When the second woe finished, but Islam was restrained in, in, on, on August 11, 1840, but in our time, this is when they will be loosed. They were loosed at the beginning, and they were restrained at the end, and now they will be loosed here again, and restrained for a time until they attack again at the Sunday law. So, Islam is loosed here, and this is where they attack Now we, re now we will read from Great Controversy, page 334, paragraph 4. And it says, In the year 1840, another, another remarkable fulfillment of prophecy excited widespread interest. Two years before, Josiah Litch, one of the leading ministers preaching the Second Advent, public and exposition of Revelation 9, predicting the fall of the Ottoman Empire. So like I said before, in August 11, 1840, this is when, this is the fall of the Ottoman Empire. But in our, in our time, where the first, the first angel is, where the fir first angel is being brought back, again, under the third, you will see the loosening of, of Islam at midnight cry upon the United States. Also, when, also when, when Josiah Lich saw that they will fall on August 11, 1840, it brought, it brought the world towards the Advent movement at that time. So now, when the wise priests give the message of Islam here, saying that it will happen, and then when it happens at midnight cry, it will, do, it will have the same effect where it will bring all to, to the message of the church triumphant. And... And, and will show, show the world that God has a people set apart that, that has his name in their foreheads. So in closing, you see the first angel's message under the third in, in our time from midnight to midnight cry. From the, from the arrival of the first angel to the empowerment of the first angel. And in 798, you see that there will be light upon you will see light, light upon Daniel and the wise will run to and fro 
in the scriptures, and the foolish will run to and fro and not find. They will have no light upon it. Just as the foolish virgins went and asked, and they had, had to go to and fro to get light, but they could not receive it because it was because they have shut their own door. Also, when the fir first angel rise, um, arrives, excuse me, you see the king of south pushing at the king of north. And that this will be steps towards the civil war within the United States. Also in 1833, when Miller went public speaking and, sh and sending the message abroad, this is the same, same thing that happened in our line where, where the wise priests will speak upon the light that they received at midnight at, at, at the cross and speak publicly and show what will happen if the United States passed a Sunday law at midnight cry. And that message that they speak will be upon the sign which is the stars, the falling of the stars, which is speaking of Islam, which where they will attack here, where the, where the United States will be judged because they have passed the first Sunday law within, within the United States, and this is the loosening of Islam as well. So <clears throat> I pray that that was plain. And yeah, that's about it. Shall we pray? Loving Father in heaven, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your son and the cross, Lord. I pray that you may help us to be more like you. I pray that you may help us to cast away our sins and fall as one dead as, as well, Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. How long was that? <laughs>